Well, I went Jonathan Taylor after all. After much hemming and hawing, much back and forth, um, pretty much up until the start of the draft. It was between Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey. I talked about it on the video I posted yesterday morning. Um, ultimately, what it came down to was if I took McCaffrey and he got injured again, I would forever kick myself for ignoring the evidence. If I took Taylor and he got injured, then I'm okay with it in the sense that it wasn't previously part of his his makeup or 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 tendencies and that's just how it goes so yesterday in the draft with the first overall pick in a league that i've been in for over 20 years i took jonathan taylor first overall this is the fantasy sports boss posting another video for you make sure you hit that like uh button and also the subscribe button if you haven't done so already um i'm out for my daily walk still uh not allowed to run yet and for those who don't know this about me i am an avid runner uh, you know but over the years you know now I'm, I'm i won't tell you how old i am but i'm a little bit older than you probably think i am and uh yeah things break down surgeries are needed which i had you know a week and a half ago still not clear to run yet so now i take a daily walk and this is, gives me an opportunity to talk to you guys but uh i also wanted to share my results in the draft entirely because you know I want to be transparent. I'm giving all you guys advice, so I want to throw it out there, the guys that I took, so you can critique me just as much as I may critique any of your drafts or, uh, or, or you know, interest in certain players. So that's where we're at. So anyway, so let me just explain the backstory, the, the backstory on this. I'm in this league for 20 years. Uh, usually we do the draft in person, but things broke down this year, so we did it through Yahoo on the online applet there and doing an online draft through yahoo is just a totally different experience than doing it in person because a you only get a minute and a half between picks so you got to scramble you got to really be ready you can't really talk to anybody uh and b people that get bumped you know in and out occasionally it's not the most dependable software and that could lead to busted picks and you know getting auto picked guys you don't want and then also when that happens too you know, it's frustrating because you may have a guy ranked highly, but he gets sniped from you just through an auto pick because um, somebody's not in the draft and it's just the next person up and that's somebody you want. And maybe if that person was in the draft drafting, they take somebody else. So that's frustrating. But anyway, so Jonathan Taylor, number one, um, had no problem with it. I'm, I'm liking it. I think he's going to be good. Very good. You know, Matt Ryan's a better quarterback. He may get fewer carries, but he's still going to get a lot of scoring opportunities. And he may catch 50 passes. He was right up there in most routes run among running backs last year. So that, that all of those reasons, durability as well, one of the best offensive lines. I'm happy with the pick. So then obviously had to wait a long time to come back. And I was looking at C.D. Lamb. Now, granted, this is a this is a 10-team league. The other league that I'm in is a 12-team league, and I'm going to – that's been a slow draft, and we're not even done with that yet. It's been over a week. It's ridiculous. But um, I will talk about that league when that draft is done. But this is a 10-team league. And I like 10-team leagues because it's more challenging to really make those good picks to stand, you know, stand above everybody else because, you know, there's – you know, you, you really can formulate a good team even if you don't have – knowledge as much as some other league mates so you really got to be on top of things in terms of getting the right guys everybody's gonna have a good team so it's really extra challenging and believe it or not that's how yahoo uh, originally started fantasy football and fantasy baseball it was 10 team leagues not 12 i don't know if anybody knew that but that was the original formulation but anyway so coming back i wanted to get an ace wide out michael pittman who i do love not part of the equation there because i already have taylor you know, T. Higgins, Mike Evans, I wasn't keen on taking them at the end of round two. But what happened was most people took running backs in round one, like I did, went receiver in round two. And so the guys that I really wanted, C.D. Lamb was the last big, big name that got taken right before me. I was going to take Lamb if he was there, but he went right before me. So what did, what did I do? I pivoted and I took Travis Kelsey, my second round pick. Never, you know, I don't even remember the last time I had Kelsey. I was thrilled to get him. I know he, you know he dropped a little bit because of the talk that, you know, he's slipping a little, he's 33, blah, blah, blah. Fair points, but 
he's going to be very heavily targeted. Almost a lock for 10 touchdowns. He's been very durable. I'll take another shot for one more year. Uh, and then, of course, back-to-back -back picks since I'm at the end. Uh, I wound up going with playoff Lenny again. And I have him in the other league, which, again, I'll talk about that. So Fournette is a guy I've doubled up on. Um, I love Fournette more than most people. I'll be the first to admit that. You know, he's going to catch 70 passes if he stays healthy. He, you know, obviously health is an issue. He misses a game or two. But I think he's overall going to be very good. Um, you know, Brady's still there. He loves him. He vouches for him every year. So I'm fine. So now my backs are Taylor and Fournette. So that's pretty good. So that's a pretty good combination to start off with, you know. So, and with Kelsey too, a tight end is loaded. So then with that as the background... Obviously, you have to wait a while for it to come back to me again. So now I really need to get a receiver. Like, totally need one. Not sure what's going to be available back to me when I when it comes back around. But um, the pickings were starting to get pretty slim already. So what happened was, and this is a quirk that was just awesome. So we did have a group chat going, and one of the league members got bumped off. He had drafted Jamar Chase in the first round, and he got bumped off, and he got T. Higgins automatically while he was bumped off. And he was pissed. He came back, and he's like, oh, man, I got bumped off. I got two Bengals receivers. I needed a running back. And so what did I do? I said, hey, tell me who you want. I'll take him right now. We'll make a trade right after. I'll take Higgins. You tell me what running back to take. He's like, take ETN. I took ETN, and the trade was done. Everybody else in the league was going nuts. They're like, oh, my God. I can't believe you did that. But it was a done deal. So we made the trade. ETN for T. Higgins. And, uh, yep, I beat everybody to it. Hey, guys, let's have it in. So that was a done deal. Now, with that said, I needed to get another receiver. All right? Needed another receiver, so I have Higgins. I know I got Higgins. And who am I taking next? Good old friend Allen Robinson. Took Allen Robinson. By the way, guys, who was just tuning in, I, I'm going for a walk. There's people walking by. I got to be polite. So, um, and sorry about the cars going by. I'll stop talking when they go by, so you don't get we don't get muffled. But uh. So I took Allen Robinson, and Allen Robinson's a guy I own in both leagues as well. And I, I absolutely love him. I think he's going to catch double-digit touchdowns easy. Cup's going to be double-teamed. So now I have Allen Robinson, T. Higgins at receiver, Travis Kelsey at tight end, Jonathan Taylor, Leonard Fournette at running back. Love it. All right. Then, next round comes back. i take out my list make sure I have this right. So then I wanted another receiver because we have a flex. And then the quarterback run started. Josh Allen went, Pat Mahomes went, Justin Herbert went, Joe Burrow went. I'm like, damn, you know, I, I gotta get a quarterback. I wanna get one of the running quarterbacks. So I took Lamar Jackson. So and he's another one I've doubled up on. And I don't like to do that because if he gets hurt, then you're screwed on both teams. So I have him in both of my leagues as well. So, but I did it. And to make it a little bit sweeter, I took Rashad Bateman as well. So now I have the stack. So now, my three receivers are T. Higgins, Allen Robinson, Rashad Bateman. Running backs, Taylor, Fournette, Kelsey, my tight end, Jackson, my quarterback. Try to beat me with that. Love it. Man, people are speeding by me. I'm on this, walking on this road. It's 30 miles an hour. People are just going nuts. All right. So now round eight and nine. Now I need to get another running back. I got two backs. I need insurance, bye weeks, and all that stuff. I wanted Ramondre Stevenson. I missed him on my last draft. I was so pissed. But this time I got him. All right? I got Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's going to be the guy. The, the, the Pats have made no secret how much they love him, and they don't like Damian Harris. Not that they don't like him, but I think that they see the limitations there, and they're ready to move on. And then I fell into the Chris Godwin trap again, and I doubled up on him. So I've doubled up on Lamar, A-Rob, and Godwin. 
I even feel so great about that pick. Um, not for the fact that he's not talented, but the fact that I have him on the other team and not really happy about having that injury question hanging over me. But as a flex with those other three receivers, I'm good. All right, so now this is when things started to get a little hairy. So round 10 and 11, again, it's a minute and a half between picks. It's rushed. I, I, the, everything cleared out. Everybody was making good picks. Nobody was reaching. The pickings were really slim at this point. So I kind of panicked a little bit. I made two picks that I really just didn't like. I, one was Trey Lance. I've been critical of Trey Lance over the last week. I think Jimmy G's not going away. Um, there could be trouble on the horizon with Trey Lance. But I did it. You know, you want to have a good backup quarterback. I didn't want Stafford again because I have Stafford in the other league, so I did it. You know, and, and listen, as a backup behind Lamar, hey, listen, he can hit the moon. But I didn't love it. And then I took Zach Ertz. I really didn't like that pick. I hated that pick. I, I got caught scrambling around again. The Yahoo, dra it moves fast. It's a minute and a half. And if you're clicking things, trying to search guys, the, the Yahoo draft applet is not very user-friendly in my opinion. I just don't like it. So I ended up with Ertz. He's got a little bit of a calf or a hamstring. I forget which one it is. May not play week one, but there's already people, that, believe it or not, though, have hit me up for him in the league because some people that got caught not taking a tight end now are interested in him as they trying to buy low on him. And I might actually might make a deal for him. All right, now, round 12, Josh Palmer. Love Josh Palmer. Chargers are going to use a lot of three receiver sets. He's going to get his. Play good as a rookie, very good as a rookie. Keenan Allen's 30. Mike Williams has a history of soft tissue injuries. If he becomes a starter in that nuclear passing offense, look out. It's going to be great. So for a 12th round pick, love it. And then I took Melvin Gordon in the 13th round. I didn't want to do it. There was literally nothing left at running back. It was pick clean. So, I mean, he played well. He ran for over 900 yards. 50-50 split with Williams last year. I think Williams will get more carries this time. But this late insurance, why not? Definitely a boring pick. And then from this point on, it was just all rookies. Round 14, I took Rashad White so I could back up Leonard Fournette. So now I'm good there. I wanted uh, Naheem Hines, but somebody had taken him as the handcuff to Taylor. And then I took Tyler Algaier, the uh, BYU rookie. I don't, I don't know what to expect there. It's just a lottery ticket. And then the last round, round 16, guys, this is what you got to do. I took Jamison Williams. I know he's going to be out for, you know, the first month of the season at least, maybe longer. Lions aren't going to rush him. But he's just a stash. He's already got the IR designation. So you use your last round pick on him, throw him right on the IR, and then pick somebody up. So I didn't draft a defense. This league has no kicker, but it but does play defense. So I didn't draft a defense. So I did that. As soon as the draft was over, I put him in the IR. I picked up Tennessee's defense. And the defenses that were left weren't very good. I wasn't drafting a defense. I never do. I figure that out on a week-by-week -week basis. As a matter of fact, I might pick up Taysom Hill. I did a video earlier today. Make sure you watch that about Taysom Hill, the cheat code that he is. Might drop Tennessee defense, figure out the rest of the roster before Thursday, and then pick him back up later. So anyway, that's how I did. Let me know. I mean, I, I do like the team. I think it's top-heavy. I love my starting lineup. I don't like having Lamar on both leagues. But in the one league, I got Stafford in the backup. In this one, I got Trey Lance, so... I think I'm, I'm protected. But uh, overall, I think this is a good team. My bench is a little bit on the weak side. So it's not, not the greatest. I got rookies on the bench, guys who are probably not going to play unless disaster hits. But, uh, yeah, post in the comments. Let me know how I did. I'd love to hear it. Just be respectful, guys. You know, no cursing, no, you know. Nothing personal. You know, this is a fun channel. I just, you know, like I said, those who have followed me on the website for 15 years, I used to do the Fantasy Sports Boss website for 15 years. Moved away from that because I just didn't have the time to keep logging on, typing up a storm, and then and then going, you know? I mean, um, it's just a lot. I do coach football. I coach high school football, so that takes up a lot of time as well. So some when you see those videos that are posted in my car, 
it's because I'm at the field house getting ready for practice. And I'm not going to miss a beat with you guys. I'm going to post the videos, make sure any, any news that needs to be discussed, I'll get that out there before I hit the field. So that if you see me in the car during the week, those videos, that's because it's right before practice. All right. So I have that going on as well. Also, I'm going to be posting college prospect scouting reports all through the college football season. Because why? Because I also have for 15 years done a annual college scouting book. It's not Mel Kuyper worthiness, but I'm proud of it. I've done it for 15 years. I've been interviewed on many podcasts for it, which is great. Um, I watch everything. I watch all college football games. Uh, and, you know, in the spare time I have, I record everything. I'll, I'll watch it, speed through the in-between snaps. I could watch a college football game in less than an hour once it's recorded. So I do that. And then every year as well, my annual fantasy football draft guides, which was a very hot seller on Amazon again this year. So, And both of my books, my, my college scouting book and my fantasy football annual draft guide are available on Amazon. I have a deal with Amazon. So you can get them there every year. Now they're book form. They're not magazines. I always stress this. I don't do magazines. I do books. So it's not going to be glossy pictures. I, you know, if you're looking for just facts, analysis, that, it's all in there. But I don't, you know, no pictures, none of that stuff. It's a book. It's in book form. So I always tell that ahead of time. All right. So again, and you can also follow me on Twitter at Rotoboss. All right. I'm on Twitter. But make sure you subscribe to the channel. You know, like I said, I started this just a few weeks ago. Um, thought this would be a great way to reach out to everybody again. And yeah, it's been great. You know, I'm already over I'm over 130 subscribers in a matter of like three weeks. So uh, I want to boost that number even more. Let's get to a thousand. Let's make it happen. You know what I mean? So anyway. That's all for today. Let me know how I did on the draft. We'll talk soon. Hit the subscribe and notification buttons, and I'll chat with you later. Take care, everyone. Be good.